How can you trust someone on big things when they consistently mess up little things? Hold that thought. We'll come back to it. Thomas Bullock was a key figure in rewriting the history of the church under Brigham Young. You might remember him as the one whose handwriting appears in the draft church history, changing Joseph Smith's anti-polygamy statement to a pro-polygamy statement. The Joseph Smith paper's biography on Thomas Bullock says that he participated in plural marriage during Joseph Smith's lifetime, and served as scribe to Joseph from 1843 until death. These are claims that could be used to argue that Bullock knew what he was doing when he altered the history, that he knew the truth that Joseph had to hide. So these are really corrections, not changes. But let's do something that everyone should do, but almost nobody does. Check the sources. The source for Bullock participating in plural marriage in Joseph's lifetime is an encyclopedia, which is basically admitting that you're lazy and appealing to authority to avoid doing any real work. And sure enough, when I tracked down the encyclopedia, it had no citation for the claim. Well, I think that you deserve better, dear viewer. So I went to FamilySearch.org to find more details. Sure enough, it says that Bullock married his first plural wife in Nauvoo on 23 January 1843. But when we look at the detailed view, we see that there are no sources for that. On the contrary, a friendly user mentioned that this cannot be correct, since Bullock was not in Nauvoo at that time, and his own journal records his plural marriage on 23 January 1846. Let's check. The Church History Biographical Database also lists Bullock's plural marriage date as 23 January 1843, yet the Joseph Smith paper's own biography of Bullock lists the date of his emigration from England as 8 March 1843. So he was still in England when, according to the expert historians, he married a plural wife in Nauvoo in January 1843. You'd think that they would catch something like that, but it gets better. When I checked Bullock's journal, I found out that the astute commentator on FamilySearch.org was right. Bullock records his first plural marriage as happening on 23 January 1846. There appears to be no original source for the 1843 date. It may have been a scribal error, but you would think that these professional historians would check the basic facts that they use to build their narrative. Speaking of checking basic facts, the Joseph Smith Papers historians said that Bullock served as scribe to Joseph Smith from 1843 until death. You might think that their source would be some sort of contemporary document mentioning that Bullock started scribing for Joseph. Oh, you sweet, sweet summer child. Their source is an article in BYU Studies. In that article, there's a table labeled Major Scribes Assisting Joseph Smith from 1829 to 1844. At the very bottom, there's Thomas Bullock, starting as a scribe in 1843 with a question mark. The source is another BYU Studies article. This one also has a question mark for the start date of 1843, claiming, without a source, that Bullock is mentioned, though it doesn't say where, as ascribed to Joseph in November 1843. In fact, the only citation in the whole Bullock section is a source for his death. So there you have it. The professional historians at the Joseph Smith papers claim that Thomas Bullock was a polygamist during Joseph Smith's lifetime, and that he was a scribe for Joseph Smith. But Bullock said he married his first plural wife after Joseph died, and the historian's own article says that Bullock was not in Nauvoo when their source claims the marriage happened. Their claim for Bullock being Joseph's scribe is based on a scholarly article, which cites another scholarly article, which cites nothing. Was this historical malpractice intentional? To try to make Bullock seem like a more reliable source for LDS polygamy than he is? As a general rule, I try to never ascribe to malice and subterfuge what can just as easily be laziness and ignorance. But it can hardly be anything else and those are not qualities that make for a reliable historian. Returning to my question from the beginning, how can you trust someone on big things when they consistently mess up little things? I say you can't. Of course, some people will continue to believe the experts and professionals without question, but I hope that you, dear viewer, are better than that. Until next time, this is I Believe Joseph, signing out.